What's up guys, and welcome back to In The Shop TV. My name is Mike, and today we are working on part two for LS Fuel Systems Made Easy, sponsored by Tanks Inc. Tanks Inc is a one-stop shopping source for all your fuel system needs, whether it be LS or something else. They've got tanks, pumps, senders, plumbing, you name it, soup to nuts, you got a fuel system, they've got you covered. So in episode one, we covered all the components, being our fuel cap, our pump, and our sender. They're all installed and ready to go. What I wanna focus on today is electrical. We gotta wire up the fuel pump and wire up the sender, and then we gotta get the wiring kind of on the other side of that step notch bridge right there. I'm not even sure how I wanna route that yet, but we'll figure it out as we go. So let's just get a little bit of a head start when I opened up the video, and I put some shrink tubing on the positive and negative terminals coming out of that fuel pump, and I put on what's called a weather pack connector. And let me explain why I did that. So since our wiring for our fuel pump goes through these little ferrules and gets hardwired into the pump, so to speak, I wanted something to be removable here rather than just soldering this or having spady connectors or butt connectors that are more permanent. So if I want to ever change this fuel pump if something ever happens, I wanted the, the possibility of just unclipping this and not removing all the wiring or anything. Now, if I had ring terminal connectors like how we have on the sender over here, that would have been a different story. I could have just ran one loom with ring terminals here and ring terminals here. But since this is kind of hardwired into the pump, I needed to do something that was weatherproof and removable. So they have these little weather pack connectors. I'm sure you guys have all seen these on your modern vehicles. Um, there's a female end and a male end. You crimp some terminals on there. They're a little bit tricky to figure out um, at first, but you'll get them after a while. Then they just snap together and it makes kind of a watertight connection that's removable. Before we dive into today's project, I just want to ask you guys if you wouldn't mind smashing that like button for me because it really tells YouTube that we're doing a good job and it promotes the video. It's the easiest thing that you can do and it helps me out the most. If you consider subscribing, that's great. We have a lot of automotive content. We're going to build this entire 55 Chevy truck on this channel. My wife's 75 Corvette. There's a ton of stuff to come. So if you guys don't mind, I'd humbly appreciate it. We made our wiring connection there for our fuel pump, but one thing that people might be concerned about and that they should definitely do before they go any further with these fuel pumps is to test it before it all gets wired and plumbed up. However, you can't just put power to these without them being submerged in the fuel because you can burn out the pump. It's not a really good practice to do. So what I like to do is very simple. If you get yourself just a basic multimeter that has a setting called continuity, you set it to your continuity setting, grab your two probes. Where are we? Grab both ends of your fuel pump, place one to one terminal, one to the other. And when you get that beeping sound, you know that you have continuity, meaning we have a complete circuit through the pump, which means our wire connection is good, the pump is good, and we're ready to proceed. All right, so the positive wire that comes from the fuel pump is kind of a small diameter. And since we're gonna might have a longer run to our relay, what I'm gonna do now is transition over to a thicker wire gauge by splicing these two wires together, and I'm gonna go ahead and solder them. Got some paper laid out here just so I don't, you know, drip any hot solder on top of our tank or a pump or a wire or anything and make a mess. And then I've got two pieces of shrink tube on both ends so that once I have make my solder connection, I can slide it over it, heat shrink that, and that'll be a permanent connection for life. Now we transition to our larger gauge wire. And the reason I did that, I know a lot of people are watching probably like, why don't you use a butt connector or something like that? I love butt connectors. I use them all the time. They're great. The thing is when I transition to a larger wire like that, you kind of have to double up the thinner wire. Since they only fit one range of wire size, you solder it. It's just one connection. It's one wire now. It's forever. Um, and you don't have to worry about, you know, maybe one connection coming loose on one end because it doesn't quite fit that butt connector correctly. So they're great. I'm not ragging on them. I will use them a thousand times in this vehicle over, but just not in this particular application. Whenever, whenever I'm transitioning over to a larger gauge wire from a small gauge wire, I like to solder it instead. All right, so our fuel pump little harness there is complete. Now we're gonna work on doing our sender. And for this, I am gonna use ring terminals instead of a weather pack connector because it's already detachable. You just take the little nuts off. We'll have a removable connection for our fuel pump and a removable connection for our sender should we ever have to change either of them.
just something small that I do is I take two different size or two different diameters of shrink tubing and I'll put the smaller one on underneath it because if I just go with this larger diameter um, shrink tubing, it may not shrink all the way to the wire size, which you know is gonna let water intrude and all that type of stuff. So by putting the smaller piece of shrink tubing on here, you build up the diameter of the wire so that the larger piece of shrink tubing seals really good to it and it seals really good at top. So we've got a nice weatherproof connection. So since it's only two different positive wires, we know that our red wire is going to be for our fuel pump and our white wire is going to be for our sender. No need to label them. Alright, so I'm going to start looming this wire up to keep it protected. Um, for that, I like to use this stuff a lot. This is a braided Tech Flex, not that cheap plastic split loom stuff that you see all the time in, in the newer cars. It just kind of dries out and gets brittle and cracks and doesn't look very good. This stuff looks really nice. It's just like the regular Tech Flex cleaving that you would see where you kind of push on it and it expands and then you could stuff wires in it. That style is really, really good for if you're gonna make a long run of wire um, and you can, you can snake it all through and just keep pushing it through, but you don't want any wire poking out of the loom at any point. I'm not sure that that's gonna be the case here, so I like to use this, which is almost the exact same thing as regular split loom, meaning it has the split down the center where you can open it up and stuff your wires in there. Um, so if you wanna have a wire come out right here, you can do that, a wire come out here, you can do that but it looks really, really nice, just like the regular braided stuff and it stays together and it lays down really nice. It's a little bit tricky to split it open and get the wires in there, but just take your time and um, it goes right in. I didn't make it long enough to go the full length of the vehicle because in the vehicle we're gonna have its own vehicle harness that's gonna come back and meet it at some point. So I kind of left it a little bit longer than where that battery box is in the bed. So it's gonna, you know, I think that's kind of gonna be kind of somewhat of a junction point. It's accessible, it's near the battery, if I need to catch any grounds or any uh, positive terminals or anything like that. So I think it's kind of a good place to just cut it off and leave it for right there. Um, and then we'll just kind of coil it up or something, leave it under the battery tray for now. So right now I'm just gonna kind of snake it through the chassis and see how it's gonna look and where it's gonna lay and try to figure that whole part out. There's the harness. I didn't drill any holes in the frame yet. I just kind of routed it through an existing hole that was in this back cross member. That was for the existing shocks for this truck. There's two holes on that side and two holes on this side. So snuck it through. And I just put two quick little zip ties very loosely up there to hold it in place. Um, and they're not gonna stay there. And drape this down and just route it into the battery box and coil it up for now. Cause I'm not sure where we're gonna go from there. We're gonna have a harness that comes this way. And somewhere around here it's gonna meet, but that's gonna be much later on. Um, I will probably drill and tap these or something, I'm not sure, so that's a bit more you know, tight to the frame and neat. But for now, that's the basic idea of where that's gonna be. More than anything else, we're gonna have a lot more wires going back there. Brake lights, tail lights, reverse lights, you name it, all that good stuff, turn signals. So, you know, I don't wanna bundle anything up yet and make anything too permanent. I just kinda wanna put it in place and see where I want it to lay and what it looks like. My goal right now, guys, is really to start working my way forward. And I really wanna get fuel line and the engine harness and all that stuff and the exhaust done so I could pull this cab, put our intake on, get all set up, get the computer set up and fire this thing up. I can't wait guys, a lot of fun times ahead. But I wanna thank you guys so much for being here with me and watching along. I wanna thank Tank Sync again for sponsoring this video. And on the next video, we gotta plumb this thing. It's gonna be a little bit more involved than just running a simple wiring harness for the fuel pump and the sender. So come on back, please like, comment, subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.